The Full Depth Podcast is brought to you by VersaLifts. Depth matters. Visit vlifts.com and enter promo code Full Depth for 10% off your next order. Hey guys, you're watching the Full Depth Podcast, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Let's go. What are you waiting for? How long has it been, um, NCR been in business for? Since uh, February 2013, right before the Open in 2013. And like, yeah. had that been something that you've been thinking about just obviously since the your inception into CrossFit or? Uh, uh, yes and no. It's like I, I found CrossFit uh, just by, you know, working out and doing some interval training. And then a buddy of mine comes up to me and he's just like, hey, let's let's push it a little further. Ever heard of this CrossFit thing? And we started working out. Uh, together doing that and that was in like 2011 that's like we'd run to the park and, yeah. and do cindy on a on a soccer net and stuff you yeah. know how everybody starts and then um i didn't even know crossfit gyms existed you know i just thought it was something that people did right. on their own and then i started googling crossfit gyms and in the in the area back then there was probably like three or four mm-hmm. like one in gatineau and then two in ottawa so i went to the one in gatineau and that's when i met reza so he was already a coach there and right. and pretty soon you know pretty early on he's like i want to open up a gym of my own one day and you know if you'd be down then, then we could do it together and right away i was like oh, open up a gym yeah sure why not you know sounds pretty easy <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? sounds pretty simple like we just need a building i think yeah. and that's it people well, will come to it back then it was like every every crossfit gym was just you know very small there was a rig some bars and they were all rusty and it's like I, I i looked around and like okay well you know, this would probably cost me like 15 grand to just to start, right? Nice and simple. Yeah. Um, obviously, it was way more than that. But, um, yeah, that's when, you know, we started talking and, and you know, we kind of saw an opportunity there. Right. Which is pretty funny because back then it was like, okay, we need to start this gym now. You know, and every month that, w- that went by that we didn't find a, a building or a spot, it'd be like, man, we're missing our chance. We're missing our chance. And now I look back. And it's like, you know, we couldn't have been more wrong. Like, yeah. we could still open up a, a brand new gym right now and it'd be just as successful, yeah. you know. It's just, it's still growing and, and people are still super excited about CrossFit. It's just back then it was, um, you know, I thought, you know, we, we weren't really sure if it was a fad or if it was going to stick right. around. And, it's that 10-year yeah. fad now. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that CrossFit's yeah. still a fad. Yeah, like, yeah, people who have, who've had affiliates for 11 years sure. to 12 years now, you know, yeah. so. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's it's definitely here to stay. Well, you got um, a spot, man. This is a yeah. beautiful spot. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah. and I love the expansion. Obviously, you were mentioning that the the addition of some space is kind of yeah. freed up and, and opened up the uh, just the accessibility to a lot more people yeah. for you guys, which yeah. is great. Yeah originally so you know we had the issue of of you know packed classes and people wanting to do their own stuff you know during classes or extra work and and using open gym and as an affiliate owner you know you don't want to ever have to say no to people you know like hey these people want to work out you're like hey can i go in the corner and just do my squats and then when it when it's getting in the way of a class and i'd have to be like no you know not during class yeah exactly you know And and that's when it got like we need to do something. Yeah. You know, yeah. we need you, to, you want to have some freedom still, right? Yeah. So that's when we're like, okay, well let's just try and, and find a, a bigger spot Yeah. or a spot with two separate rooms. And then just the opportunity came about for, you know, these, these guys beside us were, were moving. So we just Beauty. said, let's do it. Let's bite the it's always the case, right? Just kind yeah. of like happen chance. And then yeah. you kind of r- opens up that room for opportunity, which yeah. is great. Yeah. And now, you know, there's, it's just open gym all day long. Um, even during classes, you just, people are still have to be respectful of the class and, you know, sure. stay out of the way and, and not be dropping barbells while a coach is talking. Yeah. And, you know, as long as people respect the rule, then yeah, they can do, they can do whatever they want. And, yeah. you know, I think <coughs> the, um, you know, it hasn't necessarily like skyrocketed our membership base, but yep. just the members are just a little bit happier. And it probably just adds know? that extra level of, of com- uh, community and, and yeah. sort of belonging, right? The more people that stay here, mm-hmm. they want to belong here. They want to, yeah. you know, stay a little bit longer. Yeah. More, more smiles, the better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then with that, we were able to launch our, um, well, it's not launched yet, but our, our additional programming. So, you know, we have the class program right. and then, you know, we just kind of saw that people were just doing their own thing and they, they would always come up to us and be like, Hey, I, th- I did the class. What should I do now? Mm-hmm. You know? And, and now we, we sort of have that general direction for people to, to use open gym and do sure. their extra work. So that's, that's ties in the community. Like yeah. they'll do a class and then I'll see like five or six people doing the same workout in the back yeah. after class, yeah. which is, 
you know, that's the best. That's amazing. Yeah. So you, you offer like some specialty programming, obviously like barbell specific, maybe Olympic weightlifting, things like that. Or like, what do you, we, what do you have to offer besides the, the general community CrossFit here? So we, the way we program is we'll have, uh, our GPP. So our, our class programming, you know, that usually has a skill and a workout or just a heavy day or just a workout depending on the day. And then after that, we'll add in, uh, we, we call it priority work, priority one, two, three. Some of the, you know, I stole that from a program uh, that I Yoink. know. Yeah, yeah, just a buddy of mine does his own programming too. And uh, I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. I'm going to yeah. do that too. Nice. So priority one, two, and three, and we'll add in um, sometimes three, sometimes two, sometimes only one priority, and so people can do that. Right on. Uh, yeah, and it's just offered to our members for free. They get to do that uh, as additional nice. programming. We don't necessarily – what we'll do is we'll sit down the three of us and we'll kind of see what direction we want to do or go in uh, pretty short term. Like we don't go too long term yet. Um, and we'll be like, hey, like for the next three or four weeks, let's just concentrate on um, high skilled uh, pushing gymnastics. Sure. Or let's let's, you know, let's make them squat a little bit more than normal in the next three weeks and see how that how that happens. Mm -hmm. um, and we go from there. Do you have mainly the general population that come in here? Or yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's funny. We have like, and, and just this weekend, like there's a guy in the level one here in Ottawa and, and uh, he's from Ottawa and we start chatting and I'm like, oh, what gym do you go to? He goes, uh, he's like, oh, I go to Authentic in, in Gatineau. It's like, you guys are like super competitive here, right? Like it's a competitive gym. Like I thought of, of coming, yeah. but you know, I'm, I'm not really a competitor. I'm like, yeah, I have 300 members who go to uh, regionals. Yeah. You know? Like, no, like it's, you know, we have yeah. sort of that, that image because obviously the, the three owners, we compete and, yeah. and we love it. But the general population of the gym, yeah. like 99.9% .9 of, the, of the people here is just for health and fitness. Just want to yeah. get fit. Yeah. And the people who do necessarily, you know, maybe want a little bit more, it's either because they want to eventually compete or they just like working out. Sure. Right? You know, the people who are, who are adding volume to their training. They're probably like former athletes. They're, they're yeah. used to that kind of volume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, like you said, like your gym, you know, it's yeah. probably like, you know, we're probably a little bit more like 25 to 35 sure. is probably the yeah. the normal here. Uh, but we're 50-50 girls and guys. Nice. Yeah. Actually, we and met one of your girls um, at breakfast this morning. Oh, really? We yeah. had breakfast at, what was it, like a uh, sports home, bar? Hometown. 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 And, was she uh, serving you? Yeah. She was serving us, t uh, uh, taller, blonde. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. we were Because we were, you know, sift Melissa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were sifting through the NCR yeah. website, and we saw a picture, and I'm like, holy shit, dude. This, <laughs> this is our server <laughs> That's right her. now. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. kind of was like, hey, excuse me. Hey, is this you? <laughs> and she's <laughs> like, I'm super creepy, by the way. Like, come yeah. on over here and check out this picture. Yeah, exactly. She goes, she's like, yeah, we've been over there since February. So yeah. Um, looks like you guys have a, a you know a nice member base kind of scattered throughout here and, yeah, yeah. and doing well. That's yeah, great. we're like if you're familiar with Ottawa, we're like in the the south end, so like we we get um, like there's a, there's like four or five gyms like pretty much downtown mm -hmm. Ottawa, and we're just you know about five kilometers south, and we're the only one in this area. So yeah, we we kind of pick from around here, but we have people coming from. You know, Orleans or Canada, which yeah. is like east and west, yeah, like right. completely. So we have people who travel, but yeah, That's generally awesome. pretty close. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I'll do a quick intro here. What's going on, guys? It's Tyler Ray here, the host of the Full Depth Podcast, joined with, as always, by Handsome Mike on what's the mic. Up? And what's the, the dog's name again? RZA. RZA. RZA R -Z -A for the <laughs> rapper. RZA. On the, and, yeah, it's uh, not mine. But. <laughs> and you might know this gentleman over here, uh, multiple times games athlete and uh, co-owner here at NCR crossfit and arguably crossfit and sierra, CrossFit and sierra. let's just flip <laughs> the script right. on that one and arguably one of the strongest guys out of the three of us right now it's arguably the, i mean <laughs> it's, it's debatable. debatable it's debatable yeah. debatable yeah. um paul trombley thanks for joining us man no problem that's, thanks that's for awesome. having me guys yeah absolutely yeah. anytime obviously we'll just make that quick little drive <laughs> yeah, up here yeah, for you and 10 uh, or 12 hours yeah, yeah. no big deal we'll just pop up and yeah. uh, and get on the mics um so you know if you've been listening thus far and chatting a little bit about um about the gym here i think what a lot of the, the viewers and listeners like to hear is a little bit more of that kind of like inside perspective from the athletes in terms of that kind of like upper echelon games, regionals, um, uh, you know, um, experiences that you have. Let's dive right into it. How did you feel about your CrossFit season this year? Give me the, give me the, give me the general consensus of your <laughs> thoughts and feelings that, as you know, with CrossFit this year. Um, ah, oh, super disappointed, obviously. Yeah. I didn't make it back to the games. Um, and it was actually my worst regional appearance ever, like in terms of ranking. Mm -hmm. I finished 17th 
And uh, in 2013 was my first time as an individual. I finished 14th mm -hmm. and then went to the games, finished second uh, at regionals, not at the games. <laughs> and uh, then I went seven and eight, two years, and then this year, 17. So, yeah, yeah pretty dis disappointed, man. Um, the, the whole season was doing was going well. Um, you know, throughout – you talk to pretty much any competitor, like, throughout the season – we're always kind of questioning ourselves, yep. like, am I fit enough mm -hmm. right now? You know, like, am I doing the right things uh, at the right time during the year leading up to the Open? And uh, I had a baby in September. And, Congratulations you know, again. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Met him. He's yeah. Beauty. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Absolute beauty. Uh, he's uh, almost a year now. So. Nice. Um, so, yeah, during that time, it was like my mentality was, you know, life is changing. Adapt to life. Um, keep your priorities uh, you know, family, uh, work, which is gym and level ones, and then, uh, training for that period of time. And, uh, I, I, I managed to stay pretty fit during that time. I was in good shape. I uh, did a few competitions, did well. Uh, I yeah. felt good. Exactly. I saw you yeah. in February and, uh, you look great. I saw yeah. you guys train and, and, uh, you're doing awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no, I felt good. And that's when, you know, January comes along and it's like, okay, now I got to uh, shift a little bit of my focus my focus is still family one, uh, maybe training second, and then jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, so gym and, and level one. And you got my business partner right there. He's like, yeah, I know this guy puts training before <laughs> before the gym sometimes. But they're super accommodating and they're, they're great. You know, like I, I sort of stepped back from coaching at the gym around that time. Yep. Uh, just to focus a bit more on training. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, we met in February yep. at a level one. That was right before yeah. the Open. Yeah, fun fact. Yeah, Paul was my level one coach. Nice. Yeah, I popped up to uh, to Montreal to uh, seal the deal so that I could take some classes um, at uh, our affiliate at yeah. Workhorse. Didn't I do an intro for? You uh, did. You did yeah, an yeah, intro. Yeah. We That's used the right. intro for a while. We I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah, yeah, we use it every once in a while. You and Austin were, were nice enough to do the intro for yeah. us, so we'll we'll get a little bit better one this time. Cool. On, yeah, maybe yeah. on maybe on an actual microphone. Yeah, so okay. it's good. Yeah. Instead of a phone. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that was right before the open, and then uh, I felt good. I felt all right. Did the open. Uh, the open went really well uh, for the first couple weeks. Um, and then, you know, I, I did have a little bit of an injury, so I took a little bit of a break right after the open. Uh, and then I geared back up uh, for regionals when I found out that my injury wasn't as serious as I thought it was. And, um, you know, I went into regionals feeling pretty good, uh, tested all the workouts. I uh, I actually did way better at regionals did, than in training. Okay. So that's when I say like I'm disappointed. I'm yeah. I'm disappointed in the result and everything like that, but because I didn't make it, but yeah. uh, I actually did better at regionals, which is all you can ask yourself, right? Like yeah. if, you, if you've performed better on that stage, then yeah. But you know. then I take a little step back yeah. and I'm like, hey, if I did better at regionals and it still wasn't good enough, you know, what do I have to do now to either get back to where I was or to try and keep up to the guys who are, you know, sure pushing the envelope and you, i mean you're in a stack there's a big region you know what i yeah. mean the east region is a big region and uh you know i think one of the questions was the programming this year at regionals um very different than obviously in the past mm -hmm. did that have an effect on on your performance is it something that maybe didn't necessarily play to as many of your strengths you know obviously you're well known in the crossfit world for um you know moving a barbell and being mm -hmm. a, a big strong guy yeah uh definitely i mean yeah i mean there wasn't Usually I'll, I'll go into regionals, I'll look at the workouts, and I'll say, okay, well, this one and this one, I can I can win. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I don't win, I'll get a top five. You know, like a max snatch or, sure. a, you know, the the strength event or right. like the really short uh, high power high output, power output mm -hmm. workout. I'm like, okay, I can, I can gun for those. Uh, and this, this year I, I took a look at the workouts and I'm like, okay. You know, which one can I uh, can I go get a top five on? You know, because it's yeah. always okay, you got to go get points. And I didn't you know, I didn't really see one. You know, I'm like, oh, fuck. Sorry for like, no, you, you're, you're allowed uh, to say fuck on this one. OK, so yeah. amazing. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Like there's no workout that I'm looking at that I can really go win. So, OK, so it's more or less. Let's go try and do as, as best I can on every workout mm -hmm. and see what happens. Um, but I, then I take a look at that and I always trying to take a step back and, and, and be realistic. Like, uh, you know, I'm sort of an athlete that is programming dependent and I don't like that. Yeah. You know, I don't like that about myself. It's like, I, I don't like saying that the programming affects my performance. Right. 
and it's almost like at that high level i'm i'm of that sort of group of guys that are just like yeah well if there's a heavy barbell this guy's going to do really well yeah. if the heavy barbell is not there it's kind of wishy-washy it's up yeah. in the air and nobody likes to be pigeonholed though right it's yeah. like that kind of element is, is saddening sometimes yeah. and throughout the year you know I, I i do work on my weaknesses all year long absolutely uh like i, I ran all year i i uh you know i was on my hands as much as i could mm -hmm. and i did get better at that mm -hmm. uh from my standard but it's still just like you know, not as good. Like I improved my running significantly. I was still one of the last guys off the runner, mm -hmm. you know, in that workout. And I remember finishing that workout, finishing 19th in the, in the first workout. I'm like, what the hell? You know, yeah. like I, f I beat my time by two minutes. I went as fast as I could. And the guys just were so fast off the running. Yeah. That was just like, I couldn't catch up. You know? uh, so yeah. you're saying that that first event there, that was, it was the run that kind of was the catalyst for you for that one in terms of just, it put you far enough behind that, yeah. that catching up for you was, I think it was for everybody. Yeah. Like the, the, the more I talked to the guys about it after the more is like, there was not a lot of shifting right after the run, you know, uh, I, I remember getting off the run and, and like, just thinking to myself, like, I wish this workout was 20 minutes. Yeah. All right, I wish this workout was 20 rounds. Because yep. I was, like, kind of slowly catching up to the guys with the handstand push-ups. And I was trying to push the pace on the squats. But it's just, like, catching up 30 seconds on, on from the run was was too much. Yeah. You know, You're walking uphill the whole time, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah especially, in a, especially in a workout like that that requires a lot of just like it's a lot of quick body weight. I mean, you have the vest on, but it's like you got to move quick yeah. and everybody's moving quick. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, and that's another thing about the programming. Like you look at it, there wasn't anything that I would look at and mm -hmm. be like, okay, this is going to stop someone. Sure. You know, this is going to, you know, mm -hmm. put Pat Vellner on his ass. Yeah. You know, like everything was like everyone can do this. You know, there's in the past, there's always been a workout where like, Hey, well, can you get to that barbell at the end? Or can you do this unbroken? And if you can't, then you're not even in the conversation. Sure. Um, so that's when it was, you know, cause those workouts usually I look at and those are the ones that I, I'm, I can do really well at. Yeah. Unless it's like, Hey, walk on your hands for 200 feet unbroken, but I won't, won't do great at that, but I'll do a bit better than Let's I used to. Get it to. done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah, that's regarding the, the programming yeah. and, and the season. Um, you know, after that I was, you know, I remember Sunday night I was talking to my wife and, uh, you know, obviously super disappointed, but you know, I'm like, should I, you know, should I try again? Yeah. You know, was I that far off? Cause I always tell myself I'll stop <laughs> going to regionals sure. when I show up and get my ass handed to me. But I think like <laughs> the anomaly of that like to me it's like that programming comes out of kind of left field where yeah. it's like there's no like heavy implement there's nothing yeah. that really plays here so it's like thanks that, for saying that because when people say that and like well no the 80 pound no. dumbbell is heavy no like, i'm no, sorry but it's yeah. not because i can move an 80 pound dumbbell yeah. and i'm not i mean maybe i'm stronger than you know, but i can't you know that's not heavy yeah in the grand scheme of things it wasn't heavy for us like no. everyone passed it in the air everyone moved it super fast exactly and then that the workout wasn't about the dumbbell exactly the you know, adrenaline like, element of it as well right like yeah you, as someone that is kind of a subpar strength athlete with the adrenaline in that environment, you're going to move an 80-pound dumbbell like you normally yeah. probably move a 60-pound dumbbell. Yeah. So, anyhow. Yeah. And, and I'll say that for you all day long. Yeah, now. thank you. No problem. Thanks. You see, you, t you make that work out a 100-pound dumbbell, it does change yeah. things. Now it's like not everyone is going to switch in the air. There's going to be a couple guys who sure. do, mm -hmm. and they're going to win the workout. Yeah. You know, so that's when, you know, you look at those workouts and maybe, you know, tweak here and there. But I think – you know, in the grand scheme of the of the regionals, like that's what Dave's yeah. you know method was. Yeah. Like it, you you look at the the whole weekend is like it was exactly what he wanted it to be. Yeah. You know, and like the in in reality, the fittest guys still went. Yep. You know, and I think he probably wants to get away from anomalies making it to the games, and yep. that's why he's sort of. You know, I'm I'm not talking. I'm not saying like I, I heard him say this. Like sure. I'm just, you know, um, imagining his thought process. And it's always, did the fittest guys make it to the games? Mm -hmm. And he'll look at that from you know um, after the game. So he'll take a look at that and be like, was that guy supposed to be at the game? Sure, mm -hmm. sure. You know, he doesn't just look at the top ten and be like, okay, those guys deserve to be there. Okay, those those guys will be there next year. Yep. You know, it's like the top. The, the bottom 10, like, why were they here? Yeah. Should they have been here? Yeah. You know, and then maybe adjust the program in accordance to that to always try and get the fittest at the games. 
And the reality is in the last, you know, when, when Rich was winning every year, he was winning the Open, Regionals, and the Games. Cool. Your test, your, your test is there. Yep. You know, pretty much everything after that is just like, hey, your fittest guy won. Matt Frazier. Yep. You know what I mean? There's no question yeah, no there. no one's going to argue that. No. Like, it, oh, the test wasn't fair. Why not? The fittest guy won every single test that you made him do. Therefore, yep. the fittest was found. You know Exactly. What I mean? so, no, exactly. And that's when it's like, you know, I look at myself as an athlete and like, if I'm, you know, if I really want to still compete for that and still go to the games, like there's just, there's just big things I need to address. Yeah, there's work still. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Now, regionals finishes up. Yeah. And, you know, you've, you've gone through that process in your head of saying, mm -hmm. okay, I didn't do as well as I'd expected. Obviously, I'm fairly disappointed at this point. But you still end up in Madison as a, as a part of the demo team. Yeah. And this is your, is your second year or third? Third. third. Yeah as part of the demo team yeah. i have questions about the demo team yeah let's because hear them. because it's like I, I look from the outside and, you, and we see you guys you know showing the athletes the, the the movements and coming out in front of the floor and some of the in front of some of the fans but what's the process of of becoming part of a demo team do you apply for this Is, are you asked how's that work it's funny man I, I don't think i've ever been asked that question you're you, welcome you get asked <laughs> yeah and and that's that's part of a that's part of why it, you know, I think it's it's a uh, it is a big deal. You know, being on the demo team because you're asked. You're asked by Dave Castro. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, the the big boss, the guy who who runs the entire show all year long, and he's decided that he wants you to test the workouts mm -hmm. for the fittest on earth. So, you know, uh, from that standpoint, it, it's an honor to be on the team. Absolutely. Right? Just to to get asked and to get that email is is huge. Um, so that's the process. You usually so in the past, it's been games athletes who don't qualify. Uh, Dave will ask him to be on. Sure. Uh, this year he had two athletes on the team that uh, were regional athletes, um, and uh, I, th I think you know he, he's known them for for a little while and and wanted them on the on the squad. Do you see yourself going from CrossFit Games athlete to kind of HQ doing all the CrossFit Level One, the demo, the the whole sort of business side of things? Or yeah, yeah, I, I think. Um, Definitely the reason why I, I say yes every every year to the demo team and why I, you know I really wanted to do it in the first place was was because of that right you get to still be part of it sure. and um, and there is uh, you know it's it's almost my job it's my duty I'm I'm on level one uh, and it's you know it's HQ putting on the, the games and and Dave so it's uh, it's my job it's yeah. if if I'm being called on to play a small part in the games. Uh, and if it's testing workouts and demoing and, and being there for that, then that's what I got to do. Uh, so that's the way I see it. And yeah, I mean, it can open doors for, for other things on level yeah. one. Right. Um, but essentially that's, that's why I do it. And this year was, was pretty different than, than past years. Cause I was the captain Yep. and, uh, it captain was Paul captain, captain of the demo team. Hell yeah. And, uh, you know, I thought it was just a title at first, but it's, it's, legitimately a lot of work right you know we have to be uh at every single brief we have to uh run around and be at every announcement and uh make sure that you know dave dave's happy and we're there when he when he needs us uh so that was a cool ex uh, experience and um yeah I, I just felt like i was a little bit more part of the games and uh you know more you know had a role to play so that's that was really cool and i got to go down uh, to San Diego and test some workouts before as well. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. I, you know, how many of these workouts does the demo team do start to finish? A lot. Yeah, a lot of them. Um, in in the past, we we used to pretty much test all of them. Sure. This year, we didn't test all of them because I think – so a lot of them were already tested. Yeah. So Dave will get people down in California sure. to test some workouts. and. Uh, I went down and we, we spent the weekend testing some workouts with Kelly Jackson and uh, Alex Parker mm -hmm. um, and Julian Alcarez yep. was there as well because he's down there. And uh, so I think Dave wanted more or less all the testing to be done once we got there. Yeah. You know, new venue, not too sure of, of everything, not too sure how everything's going to run. So will we actually have time to test the workouts when we're down there? Not sure. So the bulk of like the actual testing was done for the individuals. We tested a few uh team workouts from start to finish uh but yeah he wants to see the whole thing yeah and sometimes dave will be like hey can you just do uh two rounds of this workout He'll be like yeah no problem you blast these two rounds He's like just keep going finish it yeah yep. oh, like why did i do that you absolutely know? but he does that all the time well it's yeah. like dominique at the in front of the whole yeah, yeah, entire yeah. stadium yeah. right he's like yeah you might as well just finish this thing up yeah. right now 
So good, on, good on him though. I told well Dave was like, who's gonna do the who's gonna do the the handstand push up demo for the final? I'm like Albert. He's like yeah. have him ready to do the whole thing. Yeah. I'm like done. So I go to Albert. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm like you ready? To he do the crushed whole thing? that too. Oh yeah. That's a yeah. That's well, a hard he, workout. Al- Albert won the workout in 2012, man. Uh, 2012, it was a handstand push-ups and D-ball over shoulder. Yeah. He won that workout at the games. So that's when uh, Dave was like, who, who do you want to test this? I, I tried that one in San Diego, and then on the spot, uh, like four days before the before the games, yep. I got Albert to test it, and he crushed it. Yep. You know? So I'm like, okay, hey, he's going to he's gonna show it. it. Yeah, yeah, he's going to demo it. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, what was your favorite event from your perspective at this year's games? Uh, from my perspective as just a demo athlete or as like a either spectator. like I mean if, if if okay we'll do two then right we'll yeah. do the first one as an athlete to actually you know perform the the event itself and then maybe visually as, as a spectator uh, I think there were two events that were really cool so the one as an athlete that I, I would have loved to do mm-hmm. uh, was the, the clean workout and I tested it that was a really cool workout yeah. and that was really uh, really challenging and and, and sort of cool evolution of like hey high school gymnastics but drop every rep you know yeah. reset because we know that first one is always the hard one so yeah. do that just to mess with them a little bit and then increasing weight and i think we saw some really cool uh things out of that and then the other workout that was amazing to watch um i think especially for the community was 17.5 heavy yeah. yeah just to be able to relate to it right yeah and like just to be able to watch the girls do it at Crushed. your weight. That was oh. my favorite to watch because yeah. I mean I can't even. I just watch my time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just watch my time go by. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, you know? well, the workout's over and my time has not showed up yet, so yeah. I've been beaten by every female here. Yeah, yeah. So it you was, would have been time capped at the games. I would have definitely been you time capped like, at the games. <laughs> isn't that crazy? It's unbelievable to see that how how unbelievably fit yeah. and and it's just a humbling experience to watch. Yeah, and it probably you know. It, I find like it in a not in a negative way, but in a certain way, it, it ties back to what we were talking about earlier. Where like every, everybody wants to be a competitor. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, so how'd you do in the open? Yeah. You know, you're talking to a guy. Sure. Like, take a look at the scores of the females at this weight at the games. You yeah. know, like that's just the females. Like, and you not know, even the games. Like, go back to the regionals, yeah. right? And you want to make the games first. You have to make regionals. Yeah, yeah. Do you stack up against the female regional athletes? Yeah. And it's like, no, then no. Yeah. You got a lot of work going. Yeah, and it was just. So the, I, I found that workout was, was super impressive to watch females. Guys, yeah, yeah of course, but mm-hmm. it's, I, I almost find like if for, the work, for the guys, it's, it's, you know, I look at that workout, I'm like, it's almost easier, a little bit heavier. And we yeah. talk about that in level one. It's yeah. like making a workout harder is not necessarily always going heavier, heavier right? And in, in this sense, it's like, okay, well, now your cadence is a little bit slower, 135. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you pick up the rope a little bit right. later. Forces you, you to use to your hips the proper way in exactly. a thruster, right? Now yeah. you're not just pressing the weight overhead. Yeah, exactly. So maybe, you know, your shoulders aren't necessarily as tired as they would be with 95. Mm-hmm. And 95, when, when you do that in the open, it's just like you pretty much don't look away from the ground every time. You know, you're doing your thrusters right. and you turn and grab, you know, and a little bit heavier, you'll take that extra breath. Mm-hmm. You'll pick up your rope. You'll try and relax when you're doing double right. others instead of doing them as fast as you yeah. can. But so that's for the guys. But for the girls, it was like, you know, what these women are able to do is absolutely incredible. Yeah. You know, and I watched uh, when we tested it originally, Kelly Jackson did it. And, you know, I I watched her do it, and, and she did super fast. But still, you know, the girls at the games did even faster, like a, a minute faster. So the car was yeah. sub eight. Yeah. 753 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Was bonkers. So, like, I did 755 in the open. Jesus. Like, Car <laughs> Webb beat me. That's unbelievable. At that workout. It's nuts. Like, <laughs> how insane is that? You know, I mean, you, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, amazing. So that's yeah. cool. So you obviously the 17.5 was a, a cool event for people to be able to relate to. Yeah. A couple of events that were unique to the games this year. The sprint O course, mm-hmm. the Madison triplet. Yeah. You're, did you get to go th- uh, through these events? I saw you do the obstacle course on a video uh, yeah. that was released. What were your thoughts on the obstacle course? We had this talk with Pat. Uh, he won it, obviously. Yeah, he, yeah. Re- he did very well. Um, this was an event that when I first saw, I had some reservations about. And then the more I thought about it, realized what an amazing event to include at this level of fitness. Yeah. Uh, we got to test out uh, a shitload because it was something that was very uh, unique. Right. And, and anything with a barbell, Dave can kind of just imagine how it's going to go. Sure. This was um, 
a lot a lot different so we tested a, a bunch of different ways of doing it too you know uh you know go through the monkey bars this way don't do it this way uh try it again and go under you know the the net or go over the net uh you know climb that last ladder with it with a ladder uh stable not stable sure. you know so we got to do the the um the obstacle course like probably 15 times just a variety of ways yeah yeah including you know all the briefs and we have to show it to every age group and everything so uh that was really fun and in the teams as well yeah um so the obstacle course was i think super for, from a spectator's point standpoint like you're looking at that and you're like are these guys actually sprinting you know, are they going really fast? Because you could, you could see them and they were kind of going slow. And the guys who would actually do well in it were kind of just like composed and smooth through it. Like you sure. saw Pat do it, right? right. And it was who can, can go just fast enough to not make a mistake. Right. If you made a mistake, I mean, in st- uh, other than the, uh, the semifinal where Pat actually face-planted. Face-planted. Fikowski was coming mm-hmm. back. He was going to. He was crushing it, and then Fikowski messed up, and then Pat yeah. came back. That in. was the like, coolest yeah. little exchange. Super there. Was exciting amazing. to watch. Yep. And then Pat goes on to win it. You know, yeah. like that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, but that was it. You know, don't make a mistake. Um, so that, and the obstacle course was like challenging enough that uh, it was stopping some people in their tracks. Like not only that, but like right of the first or second obstacle too. Yeah. Which was pretty bonkers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did, if you didn't have the technique on that even on the first uh like beam mm-hmm. to the rope like the first time i tried it i didn't have the technique and i didn't make it yeah. well, you know you had to think poor about garrett it. fisher was sat there for the whole entire event really and he, yeah so he didn't make it past there he the entire oh, wow. the entire event he spent on the rope to the to the beam wow and it looked like he just couldn't figure out where to hold on the rope mm-hmm. to be able to get that grip on the beam and yeah. kept kind of swinging <coughs> back and forth so yeah. if it's stopping i mean one of the 40 fittest men in the world yeah. it, it had to be a test yeah Right. You know, it was I think the argument was that it's getting it's getting to a point where it's becoming like now it's about visual appearance. Right. Is this mm-hmm. testing fitness? But like realistically, I mean, the proprioceptive elements mm-hmm. of this, the 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 balance, agility, the coordination, the body weight, you know, like it, it really is. Yeah. You know, there's no argument there. Yeah. And it was I remember talking to the guys about it and going like, OK, well, who's going to win this? You know, and, and the it was always coming back to the athlete. You know, the athlete is going to win this. Yep. That's what Pat mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. That. Like it's, it's true. It's just built for an athlete. Yeah, not yeah. Really. yeah. and yeah. Pat's an athlete. You yes, know, like the, the guy is just, he could probably pick up any sport that you give him to do. You know, he can throw a ball. You watch I him. don't know. We played <laughs> basketball with him. And uh, you know what? He's he got a couple baskets in. He, he almost hit the handstand shot, which was pretty badass. But okay. put him on a basketball court. I might might not pick him first for my team. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right that well, being said i'll take that back then <laughs> almost, almost every sport yeah almost, almost well, every i mean sport. he is canadian and he you know yeah. lacrosse player so yeah but you know what basketball I, i'm the same way I, I mean i can shoot a basketball but uh, uh, americans are all very good at basketball mm-hmm. ever played basketball yeah, in america like yeah, why are they all good at basketball yeah, that was my sport growing up. So yeah, it's, okay. it's it's one of those ones where it's like you have to be involved in basketball from a very young age because yeah. it's a it's a rhythm sport, it right? Is. Basketball is very much that there's an, an element of like kind of like swag to the sport that translates yeah. not only into the lifestyle but to the game. Yeah, you can't be a rigid like you know person. You, you can't it. just grab a stick and like shoot a puck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know yeah right? there's a certain amount of right. uh, skill set right. that right. needs to be just from exposure purposes. Yeah. So sorry that was off track, but so, no, Pat, thanks right. for playing ball with us, by the way. Yeah, you suck, Pat. Fuck. <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll go see if uh, some fitness translates over into the uh, can't wait into the, some some long drives. Can't wait. Love love golf. Absolutely. Well, yeah. we'll we'll head over there after. Next question for yeah. you. This weekend you had the um, level one course here. Yeah. Um, at your box, and obviously we've mentioned that um, you coached me through in, in Montreal. How has your role with CF Level One? Um, you know, benefited you overall in your terms of your career and, uh, you know, how'd you get involved in that in the first place? Um, honestly, it's been something that I've wanted to do ever since I took my level one, you know, um, I took my level one in 2012. Um, pretty much just when I wanted to get into coaching, uh, you know, I, I, I remember talking to Reza about it. I'm like, I think I kind of want to coach, you know, help you guys out here in the box. I'm like, what are my steps? I didn't even know that you needed a level mm-hmm. one. It's like, first, you have to go do your level one. I'm like, okay, cool. I booked it in the next month, so I went. Uh, and when I when I did it, I remember, like, I've always kind of wanted to be a teacher as well. Like, that was always a little bit of a dream of mine. Um, I didn't take that route. I took a different one. But, 
the presentation aspect and being in front of people and, and teaching, I've always kind of enjoyed. So I remember watching uh, James Hobart, Austin Maliolo, um, Joe DeGain. I had um, – who else? That's all I can remember right now. Oh, Adrian Bosman was there yeah. too. I remember watching them anyways, and they're all just so good in front, and they just inspired me to like – to, to, to give the message, but to also just be in front. There's an, you know, enter- there's like, an entertaining element yeah, to it, right? exactly. And, and, you, and you were very good at it. Thank you. You know, and, and I'm a person as well that is very co- you know, competent in front of a group of people. So yeah. when I was taking the course, I was interested to see how it, it would feel. Yeah. And it was, it was fun. I had a yeah. good time. I really did. Thanks. There's definitely that aspect of it that, that, is, uh, that you need, you know, to, to be on level one staff. And to be honest, like originally it was that. Like I, I want to be up there. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be in front there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, as as my career grew, you know, in CrossFit and in coaching, uh, it was more and more like I want to spread this message. You know, yeah. I, I want to get in front of the crowd to tell them how awesome this is. Yeah. You know, how awesome a squad is. You know, so um, and as as it uh, progressed, you know, here in the we opened up the gym. I coached a bunch here, um, and then I I went to the games and I met some people at the games and I remember just telling uh EC Sinkowski like you know I, I'd love to maybe one day be on staff like that's a that's a dream of mine she's like hey this is how you apply and I applied to uh, to do the internship and then I w- went from there that's amazing yeah I might grab that that application for yeah, you at yeah. some point um now CF level one, I was there. It was it was a big group, a lot, mm-hmm. lot of people from all over, and varying you know backgrounds as well. Yeah. It's not all. It didn't seem anyway that everybody was there to take it to become a coach, right? Yeah. You know, wh- what is who is the CF level one for? That's that's interesting. It's for everybody, and I th- honestly, you probably see that in CrossFit, and I don't know if you see that anywhere else in the fitness industry, where the group of people paying a lot of money to get this message and, and to get this certificate all have different goals. Yeah. Right. You know, it's, and, and I try and, and ask when I'll have a conversation, I'll, I'm pretty sure I asked you like, what's your goal with this? You know, like, what are you, what are you hoping to do? Yeah. And then you was like, Oh, I want to help out. I want to coach, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And, and everyone's got something different. And sometimes it's like, I just, I just love CrossFit and yeah. I wanted to take this for my I'll own. Learn more. Yeah. I wanted to learn more. I want to, uh, you know, for my, own personal development uh some people you know don't even know crossfit and they come and do and it's like i just kind of want to i saw that you know it was given in the area and i'm a personal trainer and i sure you know you know so everyone has sort of a different uh goal in mind when they're taking it uh, but they all just love crossfit yeah anyone who's there you know very rarely i mean it happens sometimes people are like oh i have to take it because my boss wants me to take it sure 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 but I can guarantee you at the end of the weekend, that person does not regret being there. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And then be it in the environment as well, people experiencing what it's like to work out in a huge group. You have a mm-hmm. couple of workouts throughout the weekend, having that crowd cheer you on. Like the energy yeah. was really cool, right? And I think oh, yeah. that was the most enjoyable part for me. Like I'm coming into that. I have a long background in strength conditioning. So like for me, I didn't go in expecting necessarily to like. Were you revalidating though? No. So I, I okay. what happened was basically I was I was transitioning my coaching to, um, you know, my business to a CrossFit affiliate, right? Okay. So and at the same time so bob our co-host was like you know i'd love for you to take some classes here i'm like i don't have a cf level one he goes just go and grab it so for me it was like it's another certificate and yeah. uh i don't I, i'd thought about taking it but it was like do i do i need it do i not need it i'm so glad i took it because it exposed me more so to the avenue of like maybe like becoming you know being part of the the seminar staff or something like that is something that i would enjoy mm-hmm. and then meeting you guys and seeing the passion that not only you guys have to the sport, but also to the educational side of things, right? Mm-hmm. You know, Austin, yourself, I, I asked a ton of questions all weekend. I was probably super annoying to like Courtney was, I, you know, I asked her so many questions, even the one time we, I think first breakaway group and, uh, she said, oh, what went, ro- what went wrong with this? And I was like, I don't know. His, his back was pretty kyphotic and stuff. And I was like, she had to watch myself. And she's like, yeah. strength conditioning coach. And I was like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> but like, I, so I was, you know, a little bit annoying, but I am the type of person that like, if I want to know something, I'm just going to ask, right? That's the yeah, last right. thing, that's the last thing you want to do is but just But that's why you're there. Like, you know, Ex- you have to ask those exactly. questions. And if you see, some, you know, a lot of people come to do level one and they, they, if they have just the myself as an athlete in mind, sure. you know, are these coaches are going to correct me all weekend long. Yep. They sort of miss uh, a huge aspect of it, which is 
being a coach. Exactly. You know, so when you're, you know, let's say we're in the squats group mm-hmm. and if you're just focusing on how you're moving, you're kind of missing like, you know, maybe how are other people moving. Yeah. How are the people moving? How, you know, how is he correcting this person? Like, why did he do that? And if you have that sort of mindset going into yeah. it, you're going to learn so much more. And now the, the level two, you know, from my understanding, is that yeah. now you're getting into a little more of the, the coaching element, yeah. right? Level one is here's CrossFit. Here's what it's about. Here's, yeah. the, here's the movements. And then level two is now you want to refine your skills as a coach. Mm-hmm. Am I on base with that? Absolutely. Yeah. So the level two is uh, it's, um, it's pretty much you're evaluated and, and you know, given feedback on the way you coach and yeah. different aspects of coaching. Sure. So it's not just going to be you know, seeing and correcting. It's going to be actually... Um, you know, your presence and attitude, how you demonstrate, how you, uh, you know, manage the group. So it's, it's smaller groups Mm -hmm. and it's, you know, you'll have drills on, you know, how to see a movement, how to see a fault, how to correct it. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's very coaching oriented, obviously, and there's still some theory lectures Sure. and it just goes a little bit more in depth on, on, you know, how to be a coach and, and the movements that we do. Um, but it's more, you know, it's if you've been coaching for a while, you know, don't go do your level two right after your level one, you yep. know, get some experience coaching, right. yep. uh, become a coach yep. and then use the level two to become a better one. Yep. I yeah. agree. Well, it seems like so many people get their CF one to, you know, open up their box right away and yeah. they get no experience in the coaching part, which I always tell, you know, young uh, internships that come into my gym and I say, you know, get your feet wet, coach for a couple of years, three years, four years get to meet a lot of people because you're going to find no same individual as you're coaching. So why not yeah. go ahead and, and, and take yeah. your time and get your feet yeah. wet. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really good. And it's like, that's what I, that's what we do here as well. But that's not how I started. You know, yeah. Right? Yeah. I started literally got your level one. Yeah. Cool. Monday you had a class. Yeah. You were baptism yeah. by fire. Yeah. Just jump and, right in. And maybe that's what it was back then. And it's, you know, but the standards are different, but that was also, you know, getting your feet wet and, and, yeah. and exploring, right? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sure you had other staff around you and to kind of help you out. Yeah, yeah, like and, I shadowed someone, but yeah. like probably for a couple classes, sure. you know, it wasn't yeah. uh, it wasn't like an internship process like we have here. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're right, there's a lot of people, you know, who are just like, let's get the level one and then open up a gym. And I think that's just the nature of it and then the nature of like the free market that yeah. Coach has, has created, yeah. you yeah. know, and in that you'll get some really, really awesome boxes and, and some really bad ones. But the, even the really bad ones are still changing lives, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I think that's what people miss. They, they, they'll, they'll see like this boxer, this coach doesn't know what he's talking about, but it's already a lot better sure. than those people not doing anything at sure. all. It's coming along in, I think CrossFit in general, right? It's come so far in yeah. such a short period of time that I think the next 10 years is just going to, it's astronomical, right? The, yeah. tra- the trajectory of CrossFit is in the right path. So yeah. I love it. That's good, man. I like it. We got a lot covered here. Awesome. And yeah. uh, more importantly, we're going to play some golf. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, Paul, appreciate you being on the cast today. No problem. How long was that? I don't know. It's uh, a, I don't know, probably an hour or so. I don't right. know. That's it's probably good. longer than you think. So this is one thing we figured out when doing the cast. We get yeah. up and be like, what was that, 30 minutes? It was like you know an hour and a half. You're yeah. like, whoa. You just let it, you let it unravel. Just, just got to let it unravel. Sweet. Anyway, guys, from Tyler Ray, the host of the Full Death Podcast, Handsome Mike on the mic, and Big Paul Tremblay over here. We appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you check us out on Instagram at The Full Depth. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Do it right now. And also iTunes as well. Five-star rating helps push that podcast in the right direction. Paul, thanks again. No problem. Thanks See you guys in the next guys. one. Peace. 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 See ya. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Tyler Ray here, your host of the Full Depth Podcast. I wanted to let you know that you can find us on iTunes as well as the Apple Podcast app and also on Stitcher for our Android users. If you're like me and like to listen to your podcast on the road, this is an excellent way to do so. As well, take a few moments to give us a review or a five-star rating as it helps push the podcast in the right direction. We appreciate all your support and we'll see you in the podcast.